Welcome to Syntax. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Front End Happy Hour podcast. Welcome to this week's JS Party. Live from Shipshape Studios, this is Whiskey Web and Whatnot with your hosts, Robbie the Wagner and me, Charles William Carpenter III. That's right, Charles. We drink whiskey and talk about web development. I mean, it's all in the name. It's not that deep. This is Whiskey Web and Whatnot. Do not adjust your set. Hey, everyone. We want to invite you to join us at All Things Open. All Things Open is the largest open source tech web conference on the U.S. East Coast. It's hosted annually in the heart of Research Triangle Park in downtown Raleigh, North Carolina. Target audiences include developers, engineers, decision makers, and open source community members, and anyone else involved with open source software. Four to 5,000 people from all over the world are expected in October. We're gonna be there. More information can be found online at 2024.allthingsopen.org. I really hope I don't have to spell that for you. And I forget every single time. You don't have to do the intro anymore. <laughs> yeah. We're, what's up, we're everybody? We're at a point where he doesn't have to say, what's up, everybody? Welcome yeah. to another, yeah. Ah, oh, uh, It just us. happens magically. <laughs> yeah. Check you probably away. heard a few seconds ago that this was Whiskey Web and whatnot, so I'm not even going to tell you. Um, <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> like, Shocker, this is not Whiskey Web and whatnot. This is, I'm kidding. Yeah. yeah, exactly. We tricked you into yeah. stomp Beers, on the little people to get up. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that's uh, my alternative podcast. I'm working. It's still it's still in the works. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Looking forward I to know. it. Fair enough. You'll be you'll be the first guest. Don't worry. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Remember that. <laughs> yeah, we do have a guest, as you've noticed. Taylor is here with us today. You've been on before, but if people for some reason, haven't heard that one and haven't seen you online. Do you want to give a brief intro into who you <laughs> are? Then I got to ask, do? what the fuck did you, are you listening to? How did you find us? But anyway, <laughs> regardless, tell the people a little bit about yourself and what you do. All right. So my name is Taylor Poindexter. I am an engineering manager at Spotify, coming up on my three-year anniversary in October. I lead an amazing team of 10 full-stack engineers, front-end and back-end, and I love some whiskey, so that's also what brings me here partially. Got the tech, got the mm-hmm. whiskey, and excited to be here again, guys. Nice. We're excited yes. to have you. Are you still an engineering manager, too? That we is... did talk about this. Yeah. Yep. Ghost. I'm still there. Okay. Still there. Voila. Starting to stretch to senior EM, but, you know, just pacing myself. I'm trying to pace myself. There you go. That's that's the key to all things. Can't yeah. go 100, 100% of the time. You know, you can't. <laughs> you can't. Fair enough. All right. Well, then let's talk a little about this whiskey that we know, you know a lot about in general. And this particular one is very interesting, which we chose for a very interesting lady. This is the World Yeah, oh, Cork, I guess not. Cat. The World Whiskey Society Classic Collection. It is their Kentucky Straight Bourbon whiskey finished in Japanese Mizunara oak shochu barrels. So this is a whole thing. So this is, they shipped these used barrels over from Japan from some famous place there. They are used, so they aren't. So this is just a finishing barrel. And uh, it is Bardstown Bourbon Company bourbon, which is good stuff. I've had that on its own. But uh, this is a very different finishing thing. So each run they do 1,500 bottles. So this one, I have 460 of that. It's 104 proof. It is age six years and the mash bill is 75% corn, 13% rye, and 12% malted barley. Mm. All right. And it has this super cool cap. Yeah. Which is like, that's pretty yeah. badass. I, I was don't just know what I would do off. with that. But. Maybe you weren't watching. But. <laughs> oh, you, I wasn't. I was reading this tiny text. Uh, I was saying to Robbie offline, I'm getting older and like I'm getting closer and closer to needing some sort of like reading assistance. I'm oh. already making text larger, you know, like right. you go into the iPhone and accessibility <laughs> and you increase <laughs> default <one>. font size. <laughs> I'm not at the biggest, but I have definitely upped it one or two on, you know, what it is. So it's like, I'm not full on like grandma mode, sure. but. Getting there. Getting there. Yeah. That's all right. That'll probably be all of us someday. It smells really yeah. freaking good. Yeah. Hmm. It is a little floral mm-hmm. for me in also, the smell. Already mm-hmm. had a, a palette opening uh, old fashioned here with the big cube. <laughs> nice. 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 Yeah. So 
Yeah, it begs the question is, do we drive you to pregame or, <laughs> you know, are, are you winding down from a tough day at work? It could be either or both. A little combination of both. At first I was like, oh, I'll probably just lead with the whiskey. But I was like, no, you should wake up your palate. And I'm like, you know what? And it's the end of a work day. You should treat yourself. You deserve it, girl. So. Yeah, treat nice, yourself. Nice. Yeah, I would have said that for sure. Life is too short. I like uh, this one. Definitely floral. Mm-hmm. I'm getting mm. not really like grape and honeydew. Mm. Honeydew. Okay. Grape in your smell? Huh. Yeah. I haven't tasted okay. it yet. Okay. I'm going to get there. I'm going to prime my palate a smidge with that. What cocktail did you make, Taylor? Just an old-fashioned. Yeah. I've been right. bouncing back and forth between an old-fashioned and there's something called an improved whiskey cocktail. So, hmm. you know, it still has a little bit of simple syrup. You can do it with either either bourbon or rye, but then it has a little bit of absinthe and pachards and orange bitters. It's very good. Very okay. balanced. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that does sound very interesting. I like some, yeah, like uh, all of those things, really. <laughs> I, I pretty much in the summer do Negronis on the regular. Mm. I do like gin cocktails, yeah. actually, a lot. There's one called like The Last Word. Yes. And yes, and there is a whiskey version of it too, I mm-hmm. think called like The Last war- Ward or something like yep, that. It's a that's weird. it. Yep. It's but good. Uh, also tasty. Yeah. Yeah. I like yeah. that one. I like a straight up Sazerac. If I'm yes. going like simple whiskey cocktail, I want a Sazerac. I want, I got the little sprayer, you oh, know, for the absinthe and all of that. <laughs> yeah. You do the little, <laughs> this is how you use a sprayer. I am a senior engineer, so I know how this works, but you know, for those who don't. But can you delegate um, the spraying? Because that's a real senior. That's only when I'm in a manager's role. <laughs> yeah. Then I can, yeah. As a manager, I don't delegate per se because I don't believe. The, so my personal philosophy as a manager is that I don't believe I'm somebody's boss. I believe that I'm a member of the team with a different set of responsibilities, Ooh, right? Like and some of that is to protect the team from different things and help them through rough patches or whatever else. But yeah, I don't delegate, but I allow space for responsibility. I like that. Okay. Yeah, like, I, like that. I don't want to tell you <laughs> what the solution is here. I want you to own that. And, you know, that's yeah. like part of your job and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's fair. That yeah, this is like a cinnamon bomb on the finish. Yes. Yeah. Right? Yes. Yeah, like what that. What is what is that cinnamon gum that's like big? Like big not, red. What is it? Is big red mm. the soda or is it? Like, no, no, it's a gum. No. It's a gum. Yeah. It's gum. This, <laughs> is, <laughs> this is like the third time we've had this discussion. It is still the gum. It may but have been a also soda, the soda at some point. No, but it is definitely a soda like it's in not life. It's just you need soda. to be in the Midwest to get it. Oh, yeah, maybe it's but, not, uh, not here. That yeah. big okay. red freshness lasts right through it. Yeah, yeah. Yes. I okay. There yeah, is a gun. There may also be a soda. Someone else from the Midwest confirm for us, please. Yeah, please. Uh, it's <laughs> like it, it, it's available in places where you can buy RC Cola. Okay. Oh, okay. I'll keep mm. an eye out. Mm. My fiance is from mm-hmm. Michigan, so I'll ask him about mm. the, the big red. Mm. Okay. Oh, yeah. So my wife is from Michigan. Nice. And... There's the uh, ginger ale they're all obsessed with. Yes. Is it Verner's what? or? Yes, Verner's. Yes. 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 Verner's. Mm-hmm. Yes. Anyway, uh, before we <laughs> go on too much whatnot, yeah. we should talk about this whiskey a little bit because I do, I am quite enjoying it in spite of the of the cinnamon finish. I like, like it. Too much of that sometimes gets a little weird, but like the beginning of this is really flavorful. Yes. And for 104 proof, it's very smooth. Yes. Like I'm... I agree completely. And I almost feel like this could get me into trouble, like at mm-hmm. a summer gathering. I feel like it's so easy to sip, but it's like, oh, it, it is 104 proof. Watch yourself. Yeah. Treat yourself, just not too much. A <laughs> um, little bit of both. A little bit of both. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out like its initial bits. So it's not like a ton of spice in the beginning. I can kind of see what you mean, Robbie, with like lightly on like a grape, more like a white grape juice, but like watered down a little bit. And then something there in the middle that I'm not totally catching. But I think yeah. me in the middle, it's a bit of cherry. I'm getting some cherry in there mm. with the cinnamon. Yeah, see the power of suggestion. Like I'm like, yeah, okay, <laughs> yes, like a cherry flavor, cordial too. cherry kind of thing. <laughs> no, I love it. And then there's like, you know, the Boston cream donuts. I'm get, I'm catching mm. a little bit of that. Like, mm. no, I'm just kidding. I made that. No. <laughs> I was like, oh. Uh, that whatsoever. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, ooh. It, it tastes kind of bready to me. Like I was yeah, going like to say like ham sandwich, yeasty. but it's not really hammy. It's more mm-hmm. like, like um, white bread, kind of like. 
I prefer potato bread for my sandwich. Mm. Oh, Me potato too. bread's where it's at. Potato bread is Trouble. the way to go. Trouble. Yes. I want potato <laughs> bread. I need potato rolls for my smash burgers. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, that's the, the way to go. You t- Oh, man. We could just spend the rest of the episode talking about burgers and <laughs> my... <laughs> obsession with burgers in general. Obsession. I like. I watch YouTube shows about burgers. I try and make some of these like classic burgers that George Motes. He has a whole show and a book and all this stuff, and he's like talking about classic American hamburgers. Yeah, this is. A- Do you ever take any of your potato be- bread uh, hamburger buns and put a little butter on them and then like toast oh, them? Oh yeah, up? toast them. Hundred mm. percent. Mm. Every single time. To- oh. Every single time, not messing around. Yeah, okay. every time okay. I make smash burgers, I okay. do that. <laughs> I think there was like one Baseline. recipe that I came across where they were like, "We don't suggest it for whatever reason." Like, I, don't, like, I don't know, but like, pretty shut much. Up. <laughs> yeah, I like a good. Well, it helps too with the juices coming yes. down. You don't want your bun to get soaked, and yes. if you do, so I actually put my toppings on the bottom mm. is part of it, and toast the buns. That's yes. a pro tip. Toppings on yep. the bottom. To- shredded lettuce on the bottom. Oh yeah. Okay, all right. You're what if you my just life. did it normal and then turned it upside down? Yeah, you can do that too, and some people <laughs> will tell you to do that because it's it's fine. Like if you have the cheese on top and some sauce or whatever yeah. there, turning it upside down is not going to do much, you know. But presentation wise, it's nice to put it upside sure. on someone's plate, and then if they want to play that game, but yeah, that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> so welcome yeah. to another edition to hamburgers. Uh, that's it. I don't know what else. Yeah, yeah. there's no hamburgers, hamburgers and HTML, and instead of brats, it's uh, <laughs> beers, bites, and burgers. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Anyway, all right, let's circle back a little bit. We all like this one to some degree. Let's figure out what degree that is. Our highly technical uh, rating system from zero to eight tentacles. Because hey, we're uh, we're software people. We're web people. We like zero based. Plus, a octopi, the octopi may have zero tentacles. I don't know how much longer they're going to live, but they could have zero. Anyway, I think zero, zero means is terrible. Just the octopus is gone. Yeah. He's dead. Yeah, <laughs> dead. this is a dead octopus, and so is this whiskey to me. Uh, so zero, horrible. Four, middle of the road, and eight being amazing. Clear the shelves if you can find this crazy thing on there. And you don't have to go first. We can make Robbie if you want. No, I'm into it. I would go, I would give it a seven. There's some little flavor in the middle that I can't quite pick out that I don't love, but I can't stop mm-hmm. myself from continuing to sip it. And I could see me, myself wanting to share this with my friends when they come over. So I feel like that's a pretty good signal right there if I want to share it with somebody. Yeah. So I'd mm-hmm. give it a seven. I think that's pretty solid. Yeah. Yeah. Robert? Yeah, I think I would give it a six. It's pretty good. It's, there is that weird taste in the middle that I don't, I don't know what it is. But otherwise, all of it is enjoyable. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, I don't know. I'm. I think it's so interesting. I think there's this thing in the middle, and I think this might be an artifact of the sochu, sochu, whatever. Uh, yeah, I don't know the difference in the pronunciation from Korean sochu to shoju, whatever uh, this is in Japanese. But I think it does have like kind of a bittery is it element not the same to word? it. Isn't it spelled the same? I think the no, Korean no, one doesn't okay. have the H. Yeah. Or first age as the second. But uh, anyway, so I feel like it might be something derived from that particular liquor. It almost has like a waxy quality to it. And mm-hmm. again, I think we've talked about this a couple of different times. It's sort of like if you chewed on some kind of wax candy or whatever. It, that's it. So it has like, it's like those little wax soda bottles, you know, and they would have like a cherry juice or something in it. And you get some of that wax on there. Yes. That's what I feel like it's akin to. But I do really like it. And I kind of think... It's going to be, while I'm meeting with some friends this weekend, I'll bring it over, share, and get some feedback there. But, yeah, it's it's super unique. I think the Bardstown whiskey is pretty good to begin with, so they've given it, uh, you know, a different level. So, yeah, I'm going to go seven. Hell, yeah. Seven's the magic number. And I liked for this, too. I think there's only 1,500 of these bottles made. So, yeah. oh, it's very it's special. Very exclusive. special. Exclusive. Mm-hmm. We're yeah. cool. Yeah. <laughs> They got a small stock of it, did whatever six-month finishing they were going to do here, and then that's it. You get what you get. Yep. It's kind of funny. All right. Hot takes, Robert? Let's do it. Is jQuery actually better than JavaScript frameworks? (laughs) You're like, I don't want to answer that. So Um, fun fact, I know so little about the front end. Like that is not – that's why I try to stay as far away from as possible. (laughs) 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. So no real yeah, solid changes. <laughs> Wait, is jQuery better than Laravel? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Those aren't really comparable. But yeah. They're not, but like, no, they're not. My loyalty to Laravel is actually pretty high. It is a very special place in my heart, so I'm probably always going to pick it. Yeah, and we talked about this last time. They gave you a Lambo full of whiskey. You know, you're going to shill that shit for as long as possible. Now, there's for nothing life. wrong with that. For if life. they sent me one, I would be like, yes, that one. <laughs> I love it. I love WordPress. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Okay, so know you're a fitness junkie and all of that stuff. So is creatine vaporware? <laughs> <laughs> Why not? You know, I take it every yep, day. It is, I love it. Do you? You know, yeah. I do. I yeah. do. I, I'm being reminded I have not taken my creatine today. So after I finish this whiskey, I'll probably take some. <laughs> or you mix it in yeah. the whiskey. So how you know do you I mean? tell if it does anything, though? Like, I can feel it when I take it. But I like don't know if it gives me any benefit overall. Is, or is that yeah. just what you blame your water retention on? <laughs> a little bit of both. So for me, yeah. I have this workout plan. It's like a spreadsheet that I work my way through. And so I did about a quarter of it. It's a years long like workout plan without yeah. any creatine, without any protein or anything like that. And then I introduced it a quarter of the way through and just kept like consistent metrics on my body. And my definition was a lot better. I did have more water weight. But I just looked a lot more athletic. So I was like, oh, I think it's working. Yeah. I'm going to keep taking yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Levels knows something. Yeah. There's a, there's a sub question here. Why <laughs> does everyone insist on the flavorless ones? You can tell I love this sub question. So anyway. I wrote that. I, if I think about it, I put it in a lot of random juices and just shoot it. So I think yeah. just having yeah. it like bare bones, I can do it in lemonade. I can do it in orange juice. I could do it in yeah. that like turmeric ginger shot. So just flexibility, I think, for me. And the flavors yeah, are never I good when you get them. So Yeah. So why not pick your own? Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I went through cycles of this a long time ago, back when I did bodybuilding for a while and Whoa. when I was in the CrossFit stuff and whatever. I'm in the uh, cross do nothing, you know, for the last couple of years mostly. Drink and do nothing. It seems to be working for me. But when I did <laughs> the cycle in supplements and things like that, exactly that. Like you pick your own flavor. It mixes. It's flavorless, right? That's the good thing. And there wow. was also entire movements around whether you should have sugar or salt as it's like supplementary delivery thing. It's oh. better to keep more of it within your muscles. And I don't know where things landed there. Maybe that's a like future hot take or whatever else. But it used to be like, oh, you should do it with orange juice. And then people were like, well, no, actually, you should do it with something like saltier. Oh. And this hmm. and this is better. Yeah, you I just know, coat your chicken in it and fry that up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> Gains, I don't remember baby. what the things <laughs> were, but it would be like, yeah, maybe you would still do the juice and you'd add, you know, whatever mm. a pinch of salt for. Yeah. Like, that's that's a business idea remember. right there. You make a, a shake and bake, but like it's creatine and. <laughs> 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 yeah, so that you could have fried foods, but then they're healthier because they're what? You can still I don't bake know. it. You just got to get it coated. You got to air fry it. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can't just, you can't deep fry, but you can yeah. air fry. Yeah, That's but true. I also do this thing where I go in my fridge and I'll eat like two or three olives. Maybe I should just start rolling them in creatine and, and popping yeah. them so we got a little salt creatine. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. I yeah, don't know. I love olives. Me too. I'm like the yeah. only one in my house. So but that's great. Unfortunate. So you don't have other people eating them. That's that's no, a win. No. <laughs> that's a win. Yeah, that. I guess that's true. It's a funny thing because growing up, my mom loved olives and just your plain old ones with pimentos. And she'd get so mad at me because I'd go and I would suck out the pimento and put the olive back. <laughs> As a kid, I would do that. I was like, I just like this part. And she's like, well, I like that part too. I don't want just this stuff, you know. Anyway, just reminding me for her next birthday, I'm going to send her an empty down jar of just olives, no pimentos. The best oh, son. God. Oh. <laughs> you know, if you saw the competition, you would, you'd, you'd probably think that. But uh, otherwise, yeah, not so great. It's just the bar is so low. Oh. All right. On to important things, Robbie. Are Bombas the best socks? Do not get me started. <laughs> <laughs> well, first, uh, be honest. Did they send you free socks? No. I wish they okay. had, actually. So I've been on this train of getting cheap socks. And I was like, you know, I'm a big girl with a big girl job. I'm going to invest mm -hmm. in some socks because I like to walk. Mm -hmm. Paid $86 for this pack of socks. 
wore them one time, got a hole in them. And so I know they're going to say that I can like do the warranty, but at first glance, I think I'm going to have to pay for shipping to send the socks back. I'm going to look you more won't. into it. <laughs> I have uh, knowledge. Okay, good. Oh, okay. knowledge. So I just got a replacement 12 pack. I bought three 12 packs over the last like six, seven years or something. And mm -hmm. I've got like, I don't know, eight socks left. Like most Jesus. of them have holes in them. <laughs> And so I was like, hey, can I like get a replacement? They didn't even reply. I got like an AI response that was like, uh, yeah, we have a happiness guarantee. Just click this link, put in your order number, and we'll send you a new one. So you put in the order number, and it's like, oh, I see this is a 12-pack. New 12-pack coming to you. No shipping. Don't send anything back. Whoa. If you have any socks that are still good, give them to like charity or whatever. And they're like, cool. So okay. All right. I'll take I think a little they're good. Okay. Yeah. okay, I'll take <laughs> so a little bit of my hate off of this. This is very yeah. fresh. This happened in the last hour. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So click the links or something else that might work. So knowing that, do you recommend? I mean, I'm down for like buying something that's going to last like the next five years or whatever else. I'm okay with that. So it's 80 bucks for 12. So, I, you know, it's like less than 10 comfort, bucks a sock or The comfort can't be beat, in my opinion. Okay. Like yeah. they have a nice thing on the back that holds it up. Like a lot of socks have that now, but are they, they just no show feel socks right. that work? Is that what you're doing, or are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing socks? no show socks. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, the kids these days are doing, you know, like mid knee socks. I know. Or yeah, Gen Z says no show socks or dad socks, and I'm a dad, so I'm here for it. I don't care. <laughs> I've, got, it I've got both. I'm gonna be honest, <laughs> but I found myself the other day, and I feel like my new vibe is dressing like Chevy Chase in the early '80s. Like if you watch the Fletch movies or something, that's the shit I'm wearing. Okay. But I was like wearing like a polo shirt, Uniqlo or whatever, but just like normal that. Yeah. My shorts now are like five inch inseam, had some socks up mid calf and some old like Stan Smith's, you know, which is shoes from the 70s and 80s. Yeah. So I was like, I'm feeling very Chevy Chase in the 80s vibes. But also, Maybe what that's that, the real dad flex. What does that, that tan line look like, though? Like, is everybody <laughs> just walking around with like calf? <laughs> untanned right yeah well i will say when yep. i'm in the sun that's not necessarily what you know i'm not an avid tennis player i do <laughs> like tennis and all of that but like that's not happening like i'm literally getting in the car and coming into this co-working space okay. and you know all of that so when i did get sun which did happen a bunch last month because we were in italy and out by the lake near como and all of that so i did get a bunch of sun nice. and i wore normal outside sun stuff you know so yeah. Next week, yeah. I'm leaving for a Switzerland, Italy trip, so you'll have to give me any tips you have. I gave you two restaurants. Oh, right. I forgot. My memory's so crap. Thank you. <laughs> you I bookmarked you, it. Uh, okay. El Gato Nero. Yep. You're going to want to make reservations in advance. That one's like okay. books up, but it's like super awesome, great view, all that. It's in right. Chernobyl, like right by Lake Como. Okay. And then I told you another one, and I, tried, I don't remember. I can't remember. But I that one, it's key. Okay. All right. Okay. After this. Yes. So Bombas, uh, they're good socks, and they replace them if yeah. they. This podcast holes, is which sponsored by obviously Bombas. Obviously, they do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, this could be sponsored by Bombas if you just send me two twelve packs, which will last me the next ten years, probably. <laughs> we could um, test out yeah. how well their system works, and you could use some more of my order IDs and see if you could just get this send. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> well, now they're not going to sponsor us because you're telling people how to cheat. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. This is the most serious one probably so far. So take a solemn moment here and ask, were fillers and crab cakes a mistake? They were. They were. And whoever yeah. did that, if I find you, we're going to have a problem. Big problem. Okay. <laughs> well, define fillers more than like, you know, a little uh, breadcrumbs and... Yeah, honestly, I don't know exactly what they put in them. I guess it's like maybe just too many breadcrumbs and like just additional mm. things. Sometimes I've seen people yeah. put like onions in them at restaurants and stuff like that. And I love onions. Don't sure. get me wrong. But like if I pay for jumbo lump crab, give it to yeah. me. It's it's such a yes. beautiful thing on its own. Add a little juice to it, but not too much. Okay, don't shred it. Yeah. Don't add all those fillers to it, whatever it is in there. And we're good yeah. to go. Don't get cheap. Yeah. Don't get You're cheap. paying the money. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted yeah. to defy gravity. Like I wanted to have nothing holding it together, but somehow be a cake. Exactly. Like yeah. I don't need any yeah. mayo or onions or celery or I don't know. Yeah. There's a ton of crap in there sometimes. I just want celery. That's why I wanted to get specific because celery happens a bunch and it's yeah. okay, but this isn't tuna salad. Like exactly. this is nicer seafood. Like, exactly. yeah. I want it to be simple and... You know, some nice crunch and then tons of crab. Yeah, yeah. I want I want that. 
I don't think I ever even order them out of like the DC Maryland area anymore because when I lived there, they were amazing. It was like good all over the place. As soon as you leave a particular zone, then they just fill it up with garbage. Yeah. 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 I feel so it. I, I think that's that that's the advice. Don't and if it was somewhere no local to you, you should you should throw some shade. Right. I thought about it because I was saying it was in the area. Maybe I'll maybe I'll shame them a little bit. I won't do it today, but maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They happen to listen to this podcast <laughs> with you. <laughs> They're big on crab cakes, seafood, and web development. So that's kind that of their thing. The restaurant. <laughs> it's the next thing. We're trying we're all trying to figure out the next thing. And it Always. might not be AI. It might be another niche. Who knows? Yeah, you crab know? cakes. Developer experience. Tech. AI. No. Yeah. Tech, food, burgers, Crea- creatine potato foods. buns. Yes. Creatine you know what? on crab cakes. You don't need f- crab. Mm-hmm. Yeah, creatine That's on crab filler. cakes creatine. in a toasted potato bun. <laughs> <laughs> you put your creatine oh. in the mayonnaise that goes on the bun. Yeah, then oh. we could do something I with this. Anyway. Something. Oh, this is a good segue, though, into any... <laughs> Potential tech topics and, you know, we're not stuck on those or whatever else. But with AI and the terrible job market in general right now, what do you think the future of development is? (laughs) It's not anything to do with crab (sighs) cakes. But I don't know. You know, honestly, I'm incredibly torn. I do think that, like, machine learning and AI has, like, a lot of great use cases. I think things are a little too bloated right now where everybody, you know, typical buzzwords – throw them around, throw them around. And I think that things will kind of fizzle out and we'll just maintain the pits that have been good. I think if people can pick up AI skills at work or like maybe take a simple course, they should do it, couldn't hurt. But I see some people putting all their eggs in one basket, trying to get like maybe their first foot in the door in tech or something like that. And I wouldn't necessarily recommend it in that case, in that way. Yeah. 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 I feel like it's like Web3. That was a huge thing. Everyone went really hard on it. And then where is it now? I haven't seen it in a while. <laughs> exactly yeah, like that. Yeah. yeah, there's there's definitely companies existing in some way, but you know they're not doing NFT projects. They're not releasing <laughs> new coins. They are trying to leverage harness the blockchain in some way, and you know who knows. I mean, I think at the heart of it, there's potential in that technology, the blockchain, and in yeah. having some sort of sensibility around oh i trust these things have happened or this is a receipt of or whatever else there but yeah you know the revolution that was i i have to say i also have skepticism in basically wrapping chat gpt or whatever flavor you like and making it talk about things on your website like okay sure maybe but i don't know also i wonder like where are they training all these models on like how much free information are we putting out there that they are using yeah it's a little scary and i do kind of wonder like you know reddit lock things down so like models can't be trained on it as much and other places are also trying to lock down that data so like what does that also look like as other companies continue to lock stuff down so i think that'll be yeah. fascinating to see play out yeah yeah definitely there like where this goes i mean it's the wild west again yep on another thing and what fizzles and what works and yeah yeah a we'll lot just of- put out a lot of fake content that it can get trained on Mm-hmm. And uh, we'll yeah. see where it goes. <laughs> and those are just the exposed ones that you know about. You have so True. many things like, you know, your TikToks that get all of this information in video form and profile form and interaction form and comment form. And they're not telling you what they're doing with that information, but they're doing something. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, it's been said a billion times before, if you're not paying for a product, you're the product. Yep. Mm-hmm. I was just thinking that. Yeah. Will we ever go back to the golden days of infinite jobs and money? I think everything is cyclical. So I think it'll probably take us some time to get back there and the landscape will likely look completely different. But I do think that, you know, everything's cyclical. We'll get back there. This just in whiskey.fund is now open for all your merch needs. That's right, Robbie. We're hearing reports of hats, sweaters and T-shirts, as well as a link to join our Discord server. What's a Discord server? (sighs) Just read the prompter, man. Hit subscribe, leave us a review on your favorite podcast app, and tell your friends about our broadcast. It really does help us reach more people and keeps the show growing. All right, back to your regularly scheduled programming. The money part of it is in the, like, history of the internet, right? Like, web development and 
SaaS application, all that kind of stuff. In that ecosphere, it's pretty young. You know, we're going to say like 25 years, give or take, yeah. maybe a little bit more. And it didn't start with infinite jobs with and money, but it did That's start true. by scaling up jobs first. I think we're going to see a regression in salaries. Mm. Because I'm seeing that. There's definitely a regression in salaries. The median has gone down across the board from what I've seen. And I think that's probably part of the point. I think they are cutting a lot of high salary people out, having a regression in the market. So now you reset your expectations for the same skill set and whatever else. And then when that's reduced, that's when they're going to want to start to increase jobs Mm. at that lower salary. Because even in my time, I mean, it took me – Almost 10 years to hit six figures. Me too. Yeah. What, Me too. Yeah. So that it was also, like seven or eight years, but it was a while. Yeah. That also makes me think, so a guy that I mentor, he's a very high performer, but he's deathly afraid of his salary being too high because he doesn't yeah. want to be targeted mm. in a layoff or something like that. And so, like, for me, I'm just like, give me the money, baby. I'll figure it out on yeah. the ass end. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Like, yeah. let me decide what I do with that money. I don't want you to hold it for me. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll get a little interest over here yeah. or something, like, right? So. Like, I'll invest that as I see fit. But, uh, yeah, I can see two sides of that coin. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've never had that fear. Uh, just give me as much money as possible, please. Yeah. yeah. I want to figure this out right now. <laughs> Insurance on a Lambo isn't cheap. I need, I'm going to need it. So, um, wearables is keeping the lights on but just in case it never is in the future you gotta be ready yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> well I, I think you should ask the second part robert yeah will ai ever be good enough that all developer jobs go away in my personal opinion no i think they may change yeah. i almost view it as a tool for us Like, okay, there may be, you know, I know people use ChatGPT to maybe brainstorm some things that they're struggling to fix or other things in the IDE, but I don't think we're going to like be wiped off the the job market just because of AI. It needs us. Yeah, I think so. I think it's accelerated search for me in a Mm. lot of ways. I can see that. Like I can, if I'm getting stuck, ask it some questions and get some other ideas, you know, it's like way cleaner than Stack Overflow. Or to like, can build oh, this text is failing. Me. Yeah, yeah, that. regex, yep. definitely <laughs> regex. That's an easy one. Yeah, like I'll I'll look up something, and even if I use it as a starting point, I always end up tweaking and changing or having a different opinion. Right? It's like that's the fun in development is that there's more than one way to skin a cat. Because fuck cats. Yeah. And <laughs> Ew. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, like, I have my style, my opinion a little bit into this. And that's that's uh, another, like, facet yeah. that just won't go away. Low-code, no-code solutions have been around for a pretty long time. And they don't seem to be completely displacing us either. I definitely that's agree. True. And I've also seen situations where somebody may be reviewing somebody else's code and, and ask, like, wait, was this chat GPT generated code. So I almost feel like the code that it generates, you can kind of tell us like maybe a little bit off or maybe not taking the full ecosystem into, mm-hmm. into mind. And so yeah. I think we'll still be yeah. around. Yeah. yeah, context is missing if you're doing it through that. And even Copilot, which has an idea of like, what you're doing in the code. And so it tries to make some assumptions there. When I used it the last time, it would always just not completely finish. Oh, it'd be like, oh, do this and this and this, and you hit the tab and it does it all, but then it wouldn't put the last bits in for me. I don't know if that was a mm. me problem or whatever else. So, to, yeah, I was always like, okay, why didn't you finish your thought there? I guess I will. <laughs> yeah. Somebody else asked it a question and they went, oh, got to go help them. <laughs> <laughs> yes. This is an interesting one because we're talking about it, like hiring and all of that in general, and this is obviously something you have to do on a regular basis as part of your position, If someone was not a referral, because we all know how this dance and game goes, if it's a referral and you trust that person, usually take that pretty seriously and then do the best you can for them in in your process. But let's say it's not a referral, because that is where thousands of people are today. How could someone impress you both via their application and then the follow-up to that is after you first meet them too? One thing that I feel like people can do, because like also keep in mind as a hiring manager, especially at somebody working at a company like Spotify, there are thousands upon thousands of resumes that come through. And yes, recruiting does screen some of them, but even sometimes I like to get in before recruiting does screening and kind of go through all of them myself. So I can really Mm. tell the people that have tailored their resume 
to the job description. I'm not saying you want to lie or anything like that, but like if technically you have experience that applies to it, definitely tweak your resume instead of using one generic resume for as many jobs as you can spray and pray and hope that it gets through. So definitely doing that a lot of times. And also like making sure that you're You'll be shocked the resume formats I've seen. Before you submit a resume, have somebody else review it and see if they think that it's readable. And also, like, what is the outcome of each bullet point? A lot of people put bullet points, but like, okay, you did this. What was the outcome or the impact of what you did there? And then once you meet with me, I want to know that you have taken time to understand the role and the company. Because some people, once I get into the interview, obviously the technical skills are important, but I can tell... You may not have even looked at the job description because you're asking me what tech stack we use or things like that. And that was in the job description. So like (laughs) show me that you have like a good attention to detail and like this isn't just another one on your list can go a long way for me. It kind of makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And I think I think that's a similar theme from a lot of hiring managers. It's hard, though. It's hard. It's a hard balance. Right. Let's say you're like on the job market and you're feeling desperate. It's like, yeah, do I take that extra hour or so to tailor and that's a double entendre or well, how really good is AI kind of at that can you yeah, be like tailor this to spotify that's yeah. true i don't <laughs> like, know I've at least make that, a little sounds... effort like yeah <laughs> yeah 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 like have this and then yeah maybe there's that aspect of it but it's hard right like oh if i have my heart set on working at spotify and i spend you know a bunch of time practicing everything in this stack you know, put together a specific resume, make it so far, and maybe I make it halfway through your loop and then just doesn't work out. And then it's like, now I have to start that again. And, yeah. you know, that's really debilitating to a degree, yeah. you know, to go through that, those loops and, and grind. I definitely agree. And I guess I should say, so it's been probably about three years since I was job hunting, but I think I had like three or four versions of my resume. So I wasn't like necessarily tweaking it every single time unless I came across a role that I was really interested in. And I was like, oh, yeah. like this wasn't on my resume, but I really think this may resonate with them. So even just having maybe two or three versions of your resume can be enough. And with the with the making sure you prep for their interview, I know it can take an hour. But again, it's been a while since I was interviewing. But and especially in this market, how many interviews are you freaking getting? So like, <laughs> I think you can yeah. probably spend at least five to 10 minutes prepping. Like Robbie said, you can put it through chat GPT, but even just having a couple of thoughtful questions to ask, even if they're not particularly tailored to this company to show that you are genuinely invested in this job hunt can be a really good thing to consider in the job hunt too. Yeah. I think baseline is like review the job posting. Absolutely. Get that Mm -hmm. fresh in your mind. Mm -hmm. And then yes, having some questions. I think if you have no question, yeah, you can't there, have no questions. <laughs> yeah, you got to have some questions. Yeah. You know, anything that applies to this kind of position. Even. Yeah. For yeah, sure. like if you're curious about the tech stack, maybe read about what it is up front and then be like, I see you're using XYZ. Like, what about this one? Yeah. That and shows Robbie you read like, it. Why not that shows you're curious about it. What's that? Yeah, you'll be like, why not jQuery? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I see you're using React. Did you guys spell jQuery wrong? Is that what I... <laughs> <laughs> What's really going on? Uh, if I use dollar sign parens in your code base, what's going to happen? <laughs> Did you see the new, a uh, little bit of a tangent here, but there's something Ben Holmes put out with like Astro. It's like basically jQuery, another like dollar sign selector thing. Uh, he called it oh, something else. Oh, I think else. I did see that. Yeah, yeah, he called it something else. And everybody's <laughs> like, you mean jQuery? Like, yeah. No one can take the dollar sign ever again <laughs> yeah no like do a i don't know what else you pick ampersand <laughs> or something yeah right. so something i want to ask about i don't remember the exact context of exactly what you posted about but something about like moving up to being a manager and not being an individual contributor i just wanted to get your thoughts a little bit on like i don't know there's, there's not like a great threshold of when you should do that but a lot of people get kind of pushed into it yeah. because they're like i want to make more money i want to like move up whatever they're just hitting a wall trying to get promoted into like a higher IC role. What advice do you have around that situation? The number one thing that comes to my mind when people ask me questions like this is if you do not want to go into management because you don't want to deal with people, don't do it. Or even if it means you have to leave your company to find a role where you can stay in that IC path, I genuinely think that is the best thing for you to do. One, because if you switch to management and you don't want to do it, 
you're probably going to mess up somebody else's career indirectly. Not that you're a bad person or anything like that, but it takes a lot of energy to be a manager and to be a good manager. And it's just going to get you further away from your goal. Secondly, so I would just go ahead and either try to convince your company to make an IC role that you can continue to progress through or get out of there, quite honestly. Otherwise, it's just not it's not good for anybody involved, in my opinion. Yeah, I have a addendum to that that I think is interesting because I've seen this pattern, too, in companies will have a career ladder that allows for the IC role to keep moving up. But I've just noticed more and more at various levels that they're adding in like mentorship and leader, like team leadership, almost like pseudo product owner aspects plus mentorship level up yeah. those around they you. They basically from like, want you to be a manager, but it's not not a hundred percent all the same responsibilities. But like, yeah, it's it seems like they're blurring the lines a lot, and that's kind of I've, annoying. yeah. I've seen it some <laughs> in staff. You see it a lot more in the team lead or tech lead level now mm -hmm. where and then even as far as like senior or let's say you're you're an intermediate and you're trying to get mm -hmm. into senior and part of that path is to act as if then there'll be a lot of pressure as like mentorship and guidance and leveling up your team as being yeah. part of that rather than just being a high performer yeah it's like looked down upon to be a high performer to do that next step if you're not getting everyone else to do the work and you're doing the work because you're really fast and good at it, you get penalized for that. You're like, what? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. In my mind, and I'm trying to I'm trying to decide right now if I'm biased, but like I do agree that high performers can be like chastised a little bit. But the high performers that I think of that like get a lot of stuff done is typically the ones that don't like interacting with people. But I do think when your staff level or above one of the big benefits that you bring to the company is being able to share that knowledge. And I'm not saying like you need to be some informal manager of somebody or anything like that. But say, for instance, if you're driving some project forward, but it's too big for you to do by yourself, if it's in the, in the process of coming up with that architecture, maybe you could share your thought process with a senior engineer or something like that. Let them know what you're thinking, see what they're thinking and kind of brain meld in that way. I feel like that can be a relatively easy way to like share that knowledge and technically up level those around you without too much, hopefully headache with that. Yeah. I think that's reasonable. I think force multiplying your efforts and getting buy-in. I think that's definitely a part of it. I think that like being partially responsible for others in your team or like in your sphere of influence for them, like let's say somehow Robbie doesn't get, a promotion because I didn't upskill him in ways and like force multiply him to get that. And that I've just seen instances where like that has been a detriment to someone else getting a promotion and stuff. And I'm like, I don't know. It feels a little like oh, too much people onus mm. when it should be about solutions and force multiplying things within the business and less yeah. about force multiplying the people in the business. But I don't know. You mentioning influence made me think of another thing I've been noticing with staff engineers in the industry is that sometimes because they're not managing people, they may not have the power to be able to come in and say, like, you're going to do this and that. So they have to be able to persuade people as to why their opinions are the right ones that we should get behind. And that has been That's an tough. interesting thing to watch. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which I think might, I think it would be like part of their responsibility to yeah. like, not only develop a solution, but you can't just like force feed it yeah. across the organization. Part of developing that solution is getting buy-in and customers basically for your solution, yeah. right? Like this whole thing is always about somebody's a customer. Yeah. Yeah. Convincing anyone to do anything is hard though. Like you need buy-in all the way up the chain. Like if you're a staff and you're tasked with like, I don't know, doing something that you need other people to help with and you need them to like show up to like pairing sessions or whatever to mm -hmm. do it and just like no one shows up because it's like an open like office hours kind of thing like it's not a required one-on-one -on -one thing it's like a yeah. you know then it's like all right well no one's interested in this they have their own work to do they don't care about like this thing we're trying to push forward so unless it's mandated on high everyone's doing their own thing that persuasion bit is always really hard because they're like well, well how does it benefit me to help you do the thing that makes you look better because I did the work that you were supposed to do so that you can get your promotion. You know, it's all a, a crazy game to me. Like we should just ship as much code as fast as we can in the most efficient way we can. And who cares if I do the work or you do the work or whatever. But you could just let Robbie know that 
he just doesn't deserve that promotion. I mean, <laughs> you're just not ready. No. Well, that's another thing too, is just the like all the words on like every leveling doc are like open to interpretation. Like everyone thinks force multiplication is a different thing or like whatever. So it's like I don't know. It's it's all a rigged game, in my opinion. Sometimes that is the nature of it. I, I think to some degree that's always been the case, though, right? Mm-hmm, Any time mm-hmm. where there's subjective interpretation with your direct manager and not having the kind of relationship that would skew that in your favor, it is kind of rigged in yeah. that way mm-hmm. regardless. Yep. So some of my friends and I are all are my friends are managers, too. And so, like, you know, during promotion time, you may get in a room and everybody's jockeying for their person. Everybody's jockeying yeah, for that person. And for sure. sometimes it may just come down to the fact that one manager won't shut the heck up and like keeps pushing <laughs> for their person, keeps pushing yeah. for their person. It's not even necessarily that that person is the best, but maybe they just have a more spunky manager or something like that that's able to make it happen. So like it's all a weird, interesting game sometimes. Yeah. 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 I hate that part. Like, you should let the engineers speak for themselves in that kind of meeting, I feel like, or like mm. have other engineers, maybe higher level engineers, like giving feedback on like, this person's great. They should be promoted because like, well, yeah, there's so much like politics of just managers in a room being like, oh yeah, these people are great. And like, if you have a manager who doesn't speak up, you're never going to be promoted. So like, yeah, because objective metrics are also very difficult. I mean, yes. there's an entire yeah, industry yeah. on trying to, say they can prove engineering performance and yeah. what is productivity and what is yeah. what is that, right? Like there's all these metrics and there's this system and right there's now a whole business pushing tools around that. And they're interesting. I think that like, I mean, I've had to use some of them and I've just said, this is interesting. This is a piece of the puzzle, but I don't want to necessarily say, great, go split up your PRs four for every one excuse me, and then you can win this metric like that, you know, and what ticket is that associated to? I don't know. It's all like, I wish I could tell you just do A and you will get outcome B, but that doesn't exist anywhere yeah. that I've ever seen, right? And also like how, I've never used one of those tools, but my first thought is like, how do I account for my tech lead who's not necessarily pushing tickets across the board, but they're multiplying everybody on the team, doing the architecture, doing the meetings and those types of things. So it looks like she's not doing anything, but she's actually like kicking complete ass. I mean, and at that point, you as that manager, it's the onus is now on you. Yeah. You can ask like that person to sort of help you in this process or whatever. But then you're going to come and say, just so you know, as we're talking about performance evaluations, this person is doing their job really well because we've said multiplying the performance of their team is the win. And this is what's happening. But it's hard. It's a lot of like work and a lot like you, okay, you like that person, you help them, you give them the path. Or if you're like, oh, you're kind of an asshole to me. So figure it out, buddy. You know, who knows? (laughs) I mean, not saying that you specifically would do that, but just like thinking about like how there is still a human element there and you're dependent on someone else to advocate for you for that next level. Yep. And I think that's actually the hardest part of management is that we're all humans with our own flaws and with our own thought processes and ways of living. And we're just like connecting and trying to do the best that we can in some weird fucked up way. (laughs) Yeah. Right. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the nature of it. Yeah. There's a little bit fucked up everywhere. Something else that's fucked up. Tell me about how you get a grill big enough to put an entire alligator on. So that's my cousin's like custom made grill. <laughs> alligator grill? Is it, it just, yeah. just happened to be larger? Or just four alligators. It's alligators. Just, it just happens to be larger. And I guess now it's a gator grill, but <laughs> yeah. that's that's a very interesting yeah. I've only had gator one time. I had an alligator po' boy and I didn't really care for it. What'd you oh, think? I enjoyed it. it. Not, yeah. I enjoyed it, but no it was, no kink it was like shame very to tough anybody. Pork to me. I was like oh, oh, oh. That yeah. probably was cu- cooked too long. Yeah. Yeah. That seems about right. Yeah. Okay. And Fair also, enough. like, the best part is, like, the tail. So I don't know which part of the gator you had. Right. But, I don't yeah. know either. Yeah. <laughs> you don't <better. laughs> it's, a t- it's a tender meat. I'll just go to your cousin's. And get yeah, come on. And be like, oh, come on. This is where it's good. Yeah. <laughs> just hang out with my family. We just drink and barbecue and talk shit. It's great. <laughs> yeah, I'm in. Uh, if uh, next time I'm in town, that's assuming they're near you. But yes, I'll, I'll hit you up. I am trying to come in the fall, so we'll see. Oh, nice. Um, Let me know. Yeah, we'll do. 
can. Well, I mean, uh, theoretically, there's no trying. You will be here unless something goes <laughs> well, terribly wrong okay. between now and then. Right. Well, so we've talked about a couple of different plans. Like, so we go to uh, conferences too, and and do different things. Sometimes on the main stage, sometimes a little off okay. stage things, whatever else. And we'll record podcast episodes, get snippets, all that. So we're doing all things open in Raleigh. Nice. Right in October. So just whatever the logistics of that plan, am I going to come into D.C. first at some point and then we drive or I don't know. Mm. So Yeah, I guess we don't know the full details yet. Okay. So there you go. See, <laughs> I'm not full of shit. You're full of shit. Okay. okay. Um, <laughs> all right. All right. Let the record uh, show. Very aggressive. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Let everyone know. Robbie is full of shit. That's oh. why I call him Robert. So with a, as a lady with a nice job in a Lambo, how do you find yourself at a laundromat? <laughs> so the way I found myself there is so we just bought a new king size duvet and it would not fit mm-hmm. in our washer and dryer in our home. And yeah. so I was like, oh, Tracks. I could get it like dry clean, but it was like 60 bucks. And so a little bit of me is still kind of cheap. I'm like 60 bucks just to wash this dang thing. <laughs> I'll take it to the laundromat. Mistake. I should have paid that $60. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know if you've been to a laundromat recently. Well, you have. Uh, prior to that, you hadn't been in a while, and you're like, "These aren't my people. These are um, not my people." I thought I was yeah. going to get like, yeah, it was not good. And keep in mind, like, I live in a pretty good area, but I guess just like that laundromat, I found it some corner tucked off, you know, a mile away. I was like, "Oh, this is fine. Not fine. Not fine." <laughs> yeah, no, too close to you. That was the problem. You like. Go somewhere into Virginia like, oh. where there's like an Applebee's or something, you know, just yeah. close enough. And then that'll Well, happen. I don't know. There there could be some sketchy people at Applebee's. <laughs> Listen, I don't know if you saw Ken Wheeler's post, but like Applebee's, a couple of appetizers and beers is 70 bucks. It's yeah. like He said he inflation. didn't even eat just like his kids' food and like they had a drink. Two or beers or something. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it was like $70 for some mid-ass food. Right. Like, yeah. Just- I and know. I know they have those yeah. dollar margaritas, so, like, that food is expensive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know he was there for dollar mar- yeah. margarita night, so. Yeah. Without That's a doubt. True. Well, yes. <laughs> I know what. We can do a barbecue tour. Okay, so mm. I'm going to expand the realm of this because he did. I'm going to invite other people to Ken's house, too, because he oh. said, like, come by. I don't forget what picture of food, and I was like, I want to be hosted for that, and he's like, come on up. So I come into D.C., Okay. we go to your cousin's right. for barbecue, and then we go up to Jersey like and, get a, and get a Wheeler experience. Mm. Pure you think chaos, we can get I love it. Ken Wheeler yeah. to just put his address on a podcast like he did his phone number? <laughs> <laughs> right. I, was just, I do have his address, but I'm not going to publish no, it. Uh, he no. did put his yeah. phone number up, and many people texted him, yeah. and apparently he responded. Yeah. So... <laughs> Good for him, Taylor. Don't okay. don't give your number out. I will. I will. I've also yeah. had the same number since like seventh grade, and so oh, to wow. this day, people text me, and I don't know. And it's funny because my fiance just started a new job, and he was trying to be funny, and he texted me like pretending to be some guy from my past, and I immediately <laughs> blocked him. I mean, until, I, until we're nice. trying to figure out. Why our new Google Voice wasn't working when he was trying to call me from it? Yeah, and he was like, "Oh, yeah. did you never respond to that text message from the other week?" And I was like, "Oh my god, that was you!" So yeah, no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then he was like, "I'm proud of you. You yeah. did the right thing." <laughs> yeah. I never doubted you. Of course, I never doubted you. <laughs> you Immediately, know, we're getting married. It's totally fine. <laughs> yeah, that is funny. Any of these you want to cover, Robert? Before we wrap things up. Yeah, the only other thing I had on here really was, are you ready for football season? Yes. Yes. I'm very excited proper for football, football season. Right? No, no not proper. proper football. You're the only one that likes proper football. Oh. I, I just signed up my fantasy Premier League team today. We start mm. on Friday. Is it I weird know. when and you compete against no one? <laughs> right. Uh, well, listen, you know I have friends in Europe and they care about this, this other game with a round ball that you actually use your feet for. So there's that, and actually have like people all the way back from high school that I played soccer with. So, wow! You know, I got to dig deep to okay. get into the yeah, yeah. <laughs> Childhood friends. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> believe it. Or not. So you didn't believe I had friends. I get this, but yeah, I have a couple of friends from like way back in like eighth grade. Oh, so. I love that. Yeah, oh, I love that. Yeah, some in Kentucky, some in other places. Nice. Some okay. of us escaped. Yeah, making it out. I feel it. I'm from a small town too. Oh, I'm actually from like Cincinnati area. So oh, it was bigger area. Kidding. It was like northern Kentucky, right across in there. Okay. It's very urban. Okay. You know? Never mind. That's, yeah. 
And, and that's a, you know, no, no shade on you for that. A lot of people, when I say Kentucky, they always think like, oh, yeah, down on a that, horse farm and whatever plains. else. And <laughs> but you didn't even get shoes till you got out of there right? And <laughs> I said, well, that's not exactly how it went. Like, like what are yeah, shoes? Yeah, no, I used to, I was like 10 and riding the bus downtown to go skateboarding at Procter & Gamble oh. and like all kinds of ridiculous. Skateboarding trouble. at Procter & I was a troubled youth. Yeah, Procter & Gamble's, their headquarters are in Cincinnati, Ohio. And they had like a huge parking area and like it was kind of like there was an overpass like over part of it. So there were some cool concrete structures and mm. people go skate. It was just a good skate spot. Nice. That's on Cincinnati in general. But yeah, okay. the more you know, yeah. the star <laughs> comes. <Yeah. laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're about at time here. Is there anything you want to plug? Anything we didn't mention? Uh, I don't know. I can't say words. Anything you want to say, Taylor? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. You. <laughs> if you haven't found me on Twitter, I'm engineering underscore bay. And two, I am talking to a lot of people that feel incredibly burnt out. And so if you are one of those people that has been feeling burnt out and you feel like you need a break, I want to advocate for you right now to take a break. And I mean like an extended break if you can, like a two week break, throw your phone in the closet, your work phone, I mean. And just relax. If you're a manager, I know you can feel like, well, I don't want to leave my team. And I get it. But like you won't be able to continue to take care of your team the way that you do if you are not taking care of yourself. So that's the last thing I want to plug. Yeah, we didn't even get into that burnout in general. I feel like we could just like talk about that for an hour over some whiskey oh, yeah. in the next one. Therapy sure. session. I'll probably, yeah, uh, yeah I'll, <laughs> well, I'm going to have a burnout that. happy hour <laughs> and <laughs> just all talk yeah. about how burned out we are. Something of that nature. <laughs> yeah. and we'll all get like some cheap whiskey and just be like, oh, yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> some SoCo, really just throw it back. <laughs> just like oh, my life is gosh, in hell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How low do I got to get where I pick SoCo over like Jim Beam White Label? Uh, <laughs> We're at rock bottom, yeah. baby. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't SoCo actually you know. more expensive though than Jim I don't Beam know. White I haven't Label. had it in a long time. I will say somebody gave me a bottle of SoCo like probably like five years ago and I've had it in my closet. And I decided to like just put it in the lobby of my condo and just let somebody take it. But before yeah. I did, I was like, let me just see how much this cost. I was shocked. I was shocked. It was like, I think it was only like 30 something bucks for like the, the slender bottom of SoCo. But I'm like, oh, you've wow. got to be shitting me. Yeah. For this? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. For this? yeah. You can get Buffalo Trace for 30 bucks. Yes. yes. Right? And like, yes. if you're making that choice, you don't like drinking. So you should probably <laughs> just go get some gummies and get it over with. Just, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, like don't, don't yeah. fuck with this stuff. You don't need to. Yeah, you know, you don't need the calories. Just find another way. Truly, the last bottle yeah. of Buffalo Trace I bought was twenty seven dollars. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yep. hard I, to beat. I was in that. We sell it in the CVS here, oh. and they'll have like deals. Very convenient. Yeah, well, it's the Wild West. Yeah. Yeah. So grocery stores, <laughs> the CVS, and all of that. Like, yeah, that's uh, it's also like open carry laws and other things that are more fucked up. So I don't know. You mean? Just kidding. Do you mean open no, container you like it, or do you know, mean open carry? Open open carry gun. Like okay. you go into the CVS <laughs> and you can like people with a holster. Like and it's not like Vegas where you can like walk down the street drinking. I think you have to have a bag on it. I mean we're somewhat civilized. But what, whichever one you were cheering for, whatever, that totally all, all good. Originally I was thinking dichotomy. open carry liquor and then it yeah. clicked after I was like, I was like, oh, that's probably guns. All right. Yeah, I, yeah. I do love guns. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to <laughs> clarify. Yeah. yeah. I don't, I don't have any problem with guns. I don't know that a CVS is like the appropriate outlet for I them agree. necessarily. You know, Great. it's like better than schools, but how much? I don't yeah, know. Like, uh, but, uh, like anyway, here? <laughs> here we go. Well, there goes our one listener. <laughs> Gun toting motherfucking whatever. Uh, yeah, again, I don't have a problem with guns. Just don't wear your yeah. holster to CVS while I'm, I'm trying to buy you. liquor. I'm with you. All yeah. right. Yeah. Well, before we dig this hole further, let's end it here. Thanks, everyone, <laughs> yeah. for listening. Thanks, Taylor, for being on. We'll catch you all next time. See you soon. Bippity boop, bippity pop. You've been watching Whiskey Web and Whatnot, recorded in front of a live studio audience. What the fuck are you talking about, Chuck? Enjoyed the show? Subscribe. You know, people don't pay attention to these, right? Head to whiskey.fun for merch and to join our Discord server. I'm serious. It's like 2% of people who actually click these links. And don't forget to leave us a five-star review and tell your friends about the show. All right, dude, I'm out of here. Still got it.